the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Trinity Sunday comes from St. John. We have been reflecting on the one God in three persons as the God of love. And uh, we have been looking at how God reveals Himself as Trinity in the very action of God. In the first reading from the book of Proverbs, we see how the action of creation by God happens through the cooperation between the Lord and the person called wisdom. Wisdom who was begotten from eternity. Wisdom who was the craftsman of the Lord. Wisdom whom the Lord found delightful. A prefiguration of Jesus. Now, in the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, we see how our own Christian life, especially our growth in faith, hope, and love, that Christian life is really the action of the three persons. We are at peace with God, the Father. We are justified before God thanks to the Son who gives us hope and that hope is founded in the love of God poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Imagine, to be a Christian, to be truly a disciple of Christ, we find the three persons at work. We are in union with the Father through the Son in the love of the Holy Spirit poured into our hearts. The same trend is found in the Gospel. This portion of the Gospel of John is part of the farewell discourse of Jesus. He is saying goodbye to his disciples. And the disciples really felt sad. They felt orphaned already as he was, as he was saying goodbye to them. But he assured them that they will not be left alone. And he focuses on the one who will come after him, the Holy Spirit, described here as the Spirit of Truth, who will guide the disciples to all the truth. And what is this truth? That the Holy Spirit, that, uh, that the Holy Spirit will uh, guide them to. Look at this. The Holy Spirit will not invent his own truth. The Holy Spirit will convey to the disciples the truth that He, the Spirit, has heard from Jesus. Look at this. Look at the oneness of the Holy Spirit with Jesus, the Son of God. Yes, the Spirit of truth will teach the disciples, but it is the truth that Jesus had already taught. So, the Holy Spirit will receive from Jesus the truth that the Spirit will remind the disciples of. The Holy Spirit will not speak on His own behalf. The Holy Spirit will first listen to Jesus. And after listening to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will relay that truth to the disciples. And in so doing, the Holy Spirit will not glorify Himself, but will glorify Jesus, who brought the truth to the disciples. This is love, no self-glorification. The Holy Spirit will not draw attention to Himself. The Holy Spirit will direct the disciples to Jesus, 
Look at the self-denial of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, out of love, will deny Himself. That is love. Love is always emptying of self so that the other will be glorified. Now, but Jesus adds, what the Holy Spirit will get from me, huh? I got from the Father. So, ultimately, the truth that the Holy Spirit will give to the disciples is the truth that Jesus had received from the Father. Why? Because everything that the Father has has been given to the Son. And everything that the Son possesses, the truth that the Son possesses, comes from the Father. So we see here again, the Son does not seek His own glory. If the truth that He gives to the disciples leads them to glory, it is not only to the glory of the Son, but to the glory of the Father. The Spirit seeks the glory of the Son. The Son seeks the glory of the Father. And the Father is glorified in the Son. And the Son is just so happy that the disciples will be entrusted to the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. This is the Trinity, the God of love, the three persons who are devoid of individualism, devoid of self-interest. They were not competing with one another, competing for glory, competing for a space in the hearts of the disciples. The desire of the Holy Spirit is to lead us to the Father so that we can pray, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus so that we can confess, Jesus is Lord. And we hope that Christian life will be an imitation of the working of the triune God. We were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we should be people of love, people that will glory, not in ourselves, but in the truth of God and the good of other people. So, our profession of faith in the triune God in a way leads us to a mission. How do we become persons like the three persons of the Trinity? And how can our communities, our families, our parishes, our church, our whole nation, how can we reflect the love that we find in the three persons? the love that brings to unity three persons not ending up in three gods, but three persons out of love still ending up being one God. This is what we are celebrating, and this is our challenge and mission for today. Let me end with a, a story. Uh, once I attended the graduation of the son of a church worker, and uh, this church worker uh, has been a faithful worker of the church. We have, been, uh, we have known each other for a long time. And somehow I have helped his family. I have helped the children. Now comes graduation day, you know, the son. And uh, it was a surprise to us. We did not know that this uh, boy will get three medals. Hmm? It's a college graduation. We attended just to be, you know, be present and to support the family. But we were not told beforehand that he was an honor student and he was even designated to give the speech on behalf of the graduating class. But look at what happened. He was called to receive the first medal. He received it. And, wow, he was called again. So he, he went up the stage and he got the second medal, but instead of allowing his father to put it on him, he put it on his father. Hmm? Oh, and people clapped. Then the third medal came, and he called me, and he put it on me. You know? And then during his speech, he explained it. He said, I grew up in the seminary. I owe everything to my parents, and I owe everything to the church. 
And so today, I don't want to be glorified. I want to glorify those who have made me who I am. Now, that is not yet the Trinity, but it can be an image of the love that does not draw attention to oneself. It is a love that is so given to others, not to me, but to you be the glory. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.